It really is more math than you think. It really is. And what you see here are three books that are widely used currently in the United States of America in most colleges and universities. And it really is a lot more math than you think. As a person who collects math books, I get a good sense, not a perfect sense, but a good sense of what's found in old math books and what's found in newer math books like these. And certainly I think that in newer math books like these, a lot of the rigor has been lost, but not all of it. These, these certainly have some very rigorous elements. But at the same time, there's also a lot of different content. A lot of the older math books have different content versus these books here. And you know what? It's more than you think. These books have more math than you think. So in this video, I want to talk about the progression, right? So if you go to college today and you sign up and you just go to college and you don't even know what you want to study, usually you have to take a placement test and that, that test will determine where you end up. You might end up here at the beginning or somewhere before it, but let's just assume you start with college algebra and then after that, it's a progression. So you've got three books here. Blitzer College Algebra Essentials. This is typically used for a course called College Algebra. It's got a really cool chili pepper on the cover. We're going to look at it in this video. And then you have Algebra and Trigonometry. This is the one by Stewart, Redlin, and Watson. This is typically used in courses like Precalculus, also courses like Trigonometry. And I suppose courses like Algebra 2, you can certainly use this in a course algebra but typically it's used in a pre-calc course or in a trig course and lastly we have the super famous calculus by james stewart there's this version there's also the early transcendentals version which i also also own um great book i myself use the early transcendentals version for calc 1 calc 2 calc 3. so let's start with the very beginning let's take a look at the blitzer book and this is a book that you would use if you were to take a college algebra course here in the united states uh, you know, in college. And you would cover quite a bit of the material. I'll actually show you what you would cover at most schools in this video. So second edition, it's an older edition. This book is widely available. All of these books, by the way, are widely available. I will try to leave uh, links in the description of this video in case you want to pick these up. So these are college level textbooks, okay? Used in the United States currently, okay, currently. Um, this is an older edition. Here it talks a little bit about what's in the book. Fundamental concepts of algebra, equations and inequalities. So really basic stuff, but it doesn't seem so basic when you're studying it, right? It's pretty tough. Students have a really hard time with this material. Functions and graphs, polynomial and rational functions. This is a killer here, exponential and logarithmic functions. This causes major problems. Um, when I took this class, because I, I took college algebra, I did not understand logarithms. I failed the test. In fact, I got a B in the class because I completely failed um, the last test, which was on logarithmic functions. I just did not understand them. I, and I, you know, and I studied so hard. So I sometimes think that, um, you know, that's just life. That's what happens to some people sometimes. But eventually, I got it though. So, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Systems of equations and inequalities, and then here it has. Um, Shaded chapters available in Blitzer College Algebra 4th edition. I see. So you don't get these. You don't get these chapters unless you get the regular college algebra, I believe. So yeah, it doesn't seem that it goes that far. Interesting. So this book has nice explanations, has good explanations, good examples, um, good exercises. You get answers to all of the odd problems with all three books. And that's pretty much a, a universal standard. Here we have an example of something easy. Subtracting polynomials in two variables. So you have a polynomial here and a polynomial here, and we just subtract them. And it shows you, uh, you know, what to do. It explains things, changing the sign, etc. So it tries to do the best it can, and it does a really good job. Right? It does a really good job. So, but even then, it doesn't matter how go how good the book is. Uh, the mathematics itself still takes a lot of effort and brain power. So that's something that needs to be ma mentioned, I think, because no matter how well you explain it. Um, it's still going to require a lot of effort on the person who's trying to learn the material, right? Because they're the ones who are really making the most effort. You know, the people learning, um, you know, the person explaining is also making effort, but they already know it. So it's much easier for them in some sense. Yeah, lots of examples in this book. 
Lots of examples. Quadratic equations, that's something that this book covers as well. Linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities. Lots of examples. Nice pretty colors. It's a modern book, you know, it's got you know, lots of little side notes and applications to the real world, stuff like that. Using the distance formula. Which, you know, which I used to not appreciate so much, you know. Um, when, when I was a student, I always thought, you know, all well, the pictures are kind of dumb, you know, stuff like that. But over the years, and this is going to sound weird, but over the years, you know, being a collector of math books, when you, when you look at a lot of the older books and you don't see the pictures and the colors, and then you come to a newer book and you see all the pictures and colors, um, sometimes it's a bit much and, and you feel like, oh, what is all this? But sometimes it's like, hey... This is kind of cool. What's this? Oh, who's this person? You know, like the, the books with little historical notes and stuff. So I think it's good to get a mix of both. Partial fractions is something that's typically not taught. Uh, some schools might teach it, but it's not taught in a college algebra course. A lot of schools will teach this in a pre-calc course, but it's in the book just in case you are teaching college algebra and you do want to teach partial fractions. Partial fractions is a way of breaking up uh, complex rational expressions into simpler rational expressions so that you can perform operations on them such as integration or uh, finding the Laplace transform you know doing other things um, so very very powerful so that's Blitzer give you a quick look there this is a basic algebra book so I think it's good to have a book like this um, and this is the essentials version I'll try to leave a link in the description to this one and just the regular version because the regular version has more content so that one might be more interesting I actually own uh, the regular version as well. All right, let's take a look at the next book. This next book is super famous, and it has a super famous author, James Stewart. So James Stewart is the same James Stewart who wrote the calculus book, which I'll show you after this. And he was a Canadian mathematician, and I'm pretty sure he became a millionaire uh, because of his math books. He's one of the few people who, like, I mean, became a millionaire from writing math books. Who does that? Like, who becomes a millionaire by writing math books? James Stewart does, right? The legendary Canadian mathematician. So this book is called Algebra and Trigonometry. And this book is used uh, in the U.S. for courses such as pre-calculus or courses such as trigonometry. And I suppose it could also be used for a course uh, such as algebra. Uh, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it is. But most of the time, it's like a pre-calc course or a trig course. And those are courses that are prerequisites in college uh, before taking Calculus 1. So here it talks a little bit about the content. So a lot of this stuff was in the Blitzer book. So it's a lot of rehashing the same material. And a lot of instructors will say stuff like, well, I don't see why we have to teach it twice. You know, we already taught it in college algebra. Why do we have to go over it again? It's because people are human beings and people forget. It's a lot of mathematics in these books. It really is a lot in these books. I mean, it might seem easy. You might be watching this video. You might think, oh, yeah, I know all that stuff. Do you, <laughs> so, right? I mean, I mean, do you know everything in this book? There's a lot of material here. There's a lot of examples. A lot of the exercises um, are a little bit more challenging than other exercises. Even though it's basic undergraduate level math, there is a lot here. I think, I think you don't really like learn it well until you start teaching it. And I think that's why sometimes, you know, if you're a student and you're looking at your teacher and you're thinking, oh, my teacher, like, they're like supernatural. They know so much math. It's because when you teach it, you really have to know it to explain it, right? And to explain it well, I feel like you really have to know it well in order to explain it really, really well, especially some of the harder stuff. So you become really good at it, you become better through teaching mathematics. So this book has a lot of trig. It's got conic sections. Those are like parabolas, ellipses, hyperbolas, circles, sequences and series. This is a section that's not typically taught as much. Accounting and probability might be a section that you don't normally see if you were to take a class in uh, pre-calc or trig. So this one has answers to all of the odd problems. This one has little interesting applications, which I've looked at some of these applications. I think they're really interesting. I was looking at one on modeling uh, tides, which I thought was quite interesting. So if you are in the ocean, the tide rises and falls. You can use trigonometric functions to model the tides. So I went on the internet to some government website and I got all the data from the tides and I created a trig model with the, with with this book. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, that's really cool. I forgot what section it's in. I guess I could find it. Let me find it for us. Here it is. This is what I was talking about. This is 
uh, focus on modeling, fitting sinusoidal curves to data. So the example they give you is they give you the deaths and the times and they plot it. And so you see it kind of looks like a trigonometric function. So on the next page, they give you a step-by-step -step process for creating a mathematical model based on that data. And it just goes through all the steps. And I don't know if you could see it. Let me zoom in here. Just pick up the book and show you. So there's the model there. Y equals A times the cosine of omega times T minus C plus B. And it goes through, shows you how to find everything step by step. So what I did was, is I took some data from a government website that showed the actual uh, tides of the ocean uh, near a location that's somewhat near me. And then I followed these steps and I created a model uh, based on that data. And I was like, that's really cool. <laughs> so it works, you know, it's, it's kind of fun, kind of fun. Yeah, trigonometric identities. This is something that uh, people really struggle with too. So this is a, uh, this is a great book for self-study. Look at all of these exercises. So compared to older books, um, you know, these newer books give you uh, tons of exercise, tons and tons and tons. Yeah, I just wanted to make this video where I talk just about new books because I'm always making videos on really weird old books that, um, you know, you can't even find anymore. So I thought I should, I should make one on just like the modern progression of things, you know, how to actually progress through college level mathematics. And then here we have the last one I wanted to show you. So this one is called Calculus and it's by James Stewart. I've talked about this book before. So this book is used to teach or to take Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3 in the United States. So three courses with this book, two courses with the previous book, and then one course with the College Algebra book. That's six courses. So six courses. I mean, that's, that's a lot of math courses, right, with just three books. So it's a lot of mathematics. It really is more than you think. And when you take one of these courses, you know, you don't really – you don't really learn everything. It's just not possible. Even if you cover everything, you're not going to learn it. I mean, it's just too hard for most people. I usually learn, you know, I understood maybe 60% of what was taught in class. And usually by the end of the semester, I understood about, I mean, I would say whenever I got an A, I understood maybe 80% of the material, to be honest. There was always, or maybe 90%. There was always some things that I just had doubts about. So this book has the standard topics that are taught in the U.S. for Calc 1, Calc 2, and Calc 3. Uh, it's also used in Canada. James Stewart was a Canadian mathematician, so um, I'm pretty sure this is used in Canada. And I'm pr I know this book, they have it in Spanish. I've seen it in Spanish. It's used in other countries as well. And it goes all the way through single variable calculus to, you know, multivariable calculus. And it finishes, well, it's got some second order differential equations here, which typically aren't covered uh, in a calculus course. So despite this being in the book, I don't think most calculus courses cover this topic. But it does talk about vector calculus at the end. In particular, it talks about Stokes theorem and the divergence theorem, which most calculus courses uh, nowadays don't get that far. Some schools have a calculus four, and they use that to treat uh, or to teach the later chapters. So this book, just like the others, has answers to all of the odd problems. Um, it's a very well-made book, by the way. All of these books are well-made. They're not cheaply made. Like, they feel like they're heavy duty. These books are expensive. This book, uh, new, it's probably over $200. I don't really know, but that's usually how much they cost new. Um, this one, I'm, I'm not sure if I got it new. I have, I have, I have purchased some new books, but, you know, it, it's been a, a, a lifelong collection for me. Lots of good examples. Lots of good explanations. It's not a perfect book. No math book is perfect. I use the early transcendentals version of this book, which basically just introduces the transcendental functions earlier, like the logarithmic function. So here it's introduced in uh, 7.2. Uh, so in other books, uh, you know, the early transcendentals one introduces it earlier. Tons of exercises. Some of the exercises so you can see. So tons of practice. A great book if you're trying to prepare for something for like an AP calculus exam or anything, any type of exam situation where you need to get good at calculus, it's worth having a big calculus book. It doesn't have to be the Stewart book. There's other good ones like the Larson book. A lot of people like that one better. Um, so that's, that's a good book as well. Those are three books for learning mathematics. And really, it's a lot more than you think. It's a lot more math than you think. These three books cover 
six courses in mathematics in the US and they just have a lot of math. So I think it's worth knowing math and learning about some of this stuff. It's really cool. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck.